Now, I remember when you and Margie would leave, mm -hmm. when you would go on vacation, yeah. I would come down and do your chores. Yeah. Well, you had the milk cow and the milk calves and chickens to feed and... I don't remember uh, what all kind of chores there were to do, but that was that was a highlight of my summer. I loved to come down and do chores for you. Oh, and feed I, fish. I'd forgotten about that. There were always fish to feed. I'd forgotten about that. And I remember when when you brought up the coyote pups. Oh yeah. Tell me tell me about the story about the coyote. Where did the coyote oh, come from? Was that? Anyway, we had a coyote, and it was pretty like a dog, if I remember right, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. She liked you, anyway. I robbed him. Uh, I forgot how that was. Did you get her as a pup? Yes. A newborn. Was it like, that? otherwise... I wouldn't be able to catch it, you know, but I forgot how how that was. I have I have pictures of us holding pups, mm -hmm. coyote pups, and they were the cutest things. Yeah, he's a nice little pup. They were adorable. And I and I would kind of forgot about the coyote pup. Did she have a name? Did the did the coyote have a name? A name? Mm hmm No, but I don't remember a name, but when I had a pet antelope, and that was a lopey. I remember lopey too. Yeah. A lopey. Yep. I think I think maybe we have pictures of pet and lopey too. Yeah. And when somebody'd come, he. He was starting to get horns, you know, his nubs, and he went out to, I think it was Richard or somebody, and when he hit him, he hit him, he just here, 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 little lopey. And then he got, ate something wrong or something, and got, and I don't know why, but kind of, with Goofy or some darn mm. thing. And I suppose we didn't feed him right or something, but he was a nice little pet. A little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we would come down with the school when Margie was teaching art. Yeah. And we would throw paint at the ice at the fountain oh, yeah. when it was all frozen over. That was fun. It's it's huge right now, the ice yeah, sculpture. Now to look at it's it. really big and it's really blue. It's very pretty. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that was quite a novelty that fountain. Yep. And I really haven't been outside to see it in the last few days. Well, when it's in your yard, you don't pay too much attention to it, do you? You just but, you when it's right there, yeah, and you could see it every day. You could see it. You don't think to look at it. It must go in the air twenty feet or something. Yeah, you know? I bet at least it's yeah. really tall. We'll have to get some pictures That's of it before it. we leave. We'll have Brady stand by it, yeah. so we can so we can tell how tall it is. Oh. If it's if it's three times Brady or four times Brady. Yeah, <laughs> Surprising how much that puts the water that puts out. Yep. It's just a little eight-inch stream. Had you had you seen it frozen before? I think so. I think we'd come up here. Because I remember we came up once in the spring and it was shooting water everywhere yeah, and you guys I, were playing around. I remember there. that and I remember we went and looked at the the sod chicken coop and the dugout. That's, cool. That's neat. But I think I was up here once when it was frozen. I take pictures. I wonder how it gets its blue tint to it, if it's just the water. It's clear water. Hmm. It's very clear water. That's why it gets blue. It's just that clean. Yeah, yeah. It's really pretty. Do you still have chickens? Yeah, I got a new batch of chickens. Got a new batch of chickens. chickens. Mm -hmm. You'll have to see them. I think that's the other thing I remember is there was an old cat, a really, really old cat that I used to take care of sometimes. 
was trying to remember what his name was. It seemed like it was Coot or something like that. Maybe he was just an old Coot. Margie put them in a shoebox and left them in the red barn, red granary. And I finally had to get rid of the dead cats in the shoebox. Oh no! <laughs> Margie liked her cats. <laughs> I give mine a real berry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the root cellar. Oh. That's, I'd forgotten about the root cellar. Well, it has to be redone. It's not very good anymore. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was the first root cellar I'd ever seen was your root cellar. Oh, oh here. You yeah. Should, no, oh. that was the ice house. You never saw the ice house. Oh, no. The root cellar. The root cellar over here. here. Yep. That was the first root cellar I ever saw. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a miracle. I think you, you've seen the root cellar. I yeah, think it was starting to fall in when Brady, I was there. Brady yeah. loves root cellars. He's always wanted to build a root cellar, but we don't. You should have seen the root cellar I saw when I was in Sweden. It was worth living in. Oh, really? It was fantastic. Better than living in a barn, huh? I didn't even take pictures of it. I was amazed. And there were the days about this time of year when we used to put up ice, you know. In the ice house. So how did you do that? No. Well, how did we do it? You set up a tripod. And then you'd have, we'd have ice and put it into the hottest part of the summer and then we'd be digging for a little piece of it. And the last of the ice. And I don't remember how long, maybe till August or something like that. So did you did you get the ice from somewhere else and then haul it to the ice house? Is that what you did? We put the ice up on the river. And my dad rigged up a cable from a tree on the river bank and an A-frame on the river and an anchor on the other side of the river with a cable. And then <clears throat> the river bank was didn't have a decent way to get down to it. Mm -hmm. or, but then we had a horse. Richard Richard would for, for furnish a horse mm -hmm. and we it had a cable and a pulley and a cable and and a trolley up there. And cut a cut ice of a block about as long as this table and that wide and that thick, you know. Lift it up to the cable, up the cable I went, back the horse up into the wag model T or the sled or whatever it was to haul it to the mm -hmm. ice house. <laughs> and the ice house was like a root cellar, it was dug deep into the ground? Yes. It's right out here yet. There's a log frame and a roof on it. <coughs> Gee whiz, I haven't been down in any ice straw. house for a long time. Packed straw around it to keep it cold? Yeah, what? You packed straw around it to keep it cold? Yeah, it covered with straw until we got electricity, I think it was 1948. Then you didn't need the ice house then anymore. Then we didn't need the ice house anymore. Is it in better shape than the root cellar? <laughs> Is it in better shape or worse shape than the root cellar? Yeah. It's sort of caved in. Yeah. It's kind of dangerous. I'm sure. He says it's full of treasures of some sort, you know, junk and things. So it would be an archaeology dig. There you go. It'd be a good dig site. <laughs> Well, they're digging under the outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of those archaeologists do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this place is full of treasures. And all you have to do is examine them and decide whether they're a treasure or a piece of junk. Yeah. So did you guys get the telephone or the electricity first? I think we got electricity in 1948. I believe it turned it on on Christmas Day in 1948. Oh, nice. What about the phone, the telephone? That 
was a local deal well, hooked up to the to the fences. Our first original telephones was Johnson's, Eaton's, Biles and Howerson's and us. And Swanson I know. Anyway, no it Eaton's and Swanson's, they had telephone in the town. Oh. And we didn't. So it it was us and Eaton's and Biles. And bar barbed wire telephone it was. Hmm. Telephone line was just a bar bar. Fence. And where the gate, we had a gate up here, we had a tall pole, a wire across a tall pole, hook it on the bar bar, and it goes over to Biles. Huh. Goes up to Eaton's, goes up to Johnson's. You can still and see the insulator <coughs> on the fence up there. Really? I can't imagine. <laughs> It worked. It was one of those things on the wall you mm -hmm. turned. Yep. It. And you could hear pretty good on it, huh? Now you were all on one line, so how did you know when somebody was calling you? Our ring was and, and long. Two shorts and a long. And other neighbors had a long and two shorts. And then there was a one short and a one long and a one long and a one short. So we had your own code. So you know who's, who you try to call. Huh. And of course everybody got in and listened. Yeah. Yeah. But your, but your phone line didn't go into town. No. No, we didn't have, at this place, we didn't have a phone in a town, but uh, up on the hill they did. So you could, you Friends needed to call town, you could go. And then they'd call in. Hmm. But then, of course, originally, then we got the rural telephone, which is all underground. Right. It's probably a little bit easier than having the phone go down whenever the bull gets out. <laughs> if the bull gets out and knocks down the barbed wire fence, there goes your telephone? Yeah. <laughs> You had to go fix fence and fix the telephone wire. My dad rigged up an insulator so it wouldn't go straying off to somewhere else. We hooked it on there. And up there we had a tall pole and a piece of cross for the gate, you know. Yep. I never thought about that. I always thought it was just to hold the posts straight. <laughs> That's cool. So would you guys butcher your own pigs? No, I don't hear you. Did you butcher? Huh? Did you butcher your own meat? Did I? Butcher? Did you butcher your own meat? Oh, sure. I always had a hog. And, and it rarely a beef because there was too much to handle, you know. But you could take a half a hog and hang it in the granary and go chop off a piece every once in a while in the winter time. Of course, we never did a lot of canning. Fruit jars. And we always had a potato patch and plenty of potatoes. Yeah, you got, you're very well known for your garden. You guys have always had a, a nice big garden that produces lots. I always had a good garden. That's because we got a lot of water to run. Yeah, that helps. I had more fun with my mud puddles when I was a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> I loved mud puddles because the only time we ever got mud puddles was when it rained and it didn't rain very often. Oh. stream going through here all the time. And it seemed like you never had mosquitoes bad down here. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the mosquitoes were ever very bad down here. 
Oh yeah, they were. Were they? they I always were, thought they were worse at my house. <laughs> yeah, we had mosquitoes. Had a, a net around, put a straw hat on with a net around it. But I don't know any mosquitoes anymore. Not as many. No, not they're many. not as bad. It's because it's finally wet. We, <clears throat> There's still some. Oh, there might be, but I haven't been bit by a mosquito for I don't know how long. That's good. <laughs> I used to watch him. He lay there and sink, sink that beak into your hide, you know, and blow and get full of blood. Yep. You're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the blood splatter. <laughs> mosquito. And then it was the flies. Uh, Gee whiz, we don't stay. I never see a fly anymore. You don't have enough animals around. Not enough manure. I guess. <laughs> Brandings. I remember branding up at the Grable place. Do you remember going to yeah. Do you remember going to Brandings? Oh yes. Brandings are oh, fun. Oh yeah, everybody had their branding. And always a good lunch. And a good time at branding time. Guy dragging the calves in by horseback, you know. You grab a calf and hold him down and torture the little bugger. <laughs> what was your job? Well, I... I I drug calves in, too, and there's a, a either on the front of the end of the calf or the back end of the calf, and hold it, stretch him out so they could brand him. Then they got, then we got branding, branding table, mm -hmm. where you put him in and tilt him over and turn him loose. I hated those tables. Okay. Because when we used those tables, we didn't get as many people to come to the branding. No. And it wasn't as fun. No. I remember, I have a story about branding that I heard. I wasn't there, but I heard about, you know, dehorning the calves. Yeah. We used to use the spoons all the time. Yeah. And then they came out with a new way to do it. They had like a paste. A paste, yeah. Do you remember anything about using the paste? Oh, yes, sure. I heard a story that you were in charge of the paste, oh. and you put it in your pocket. Oh, that's right. Do you remember that? Gee <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. What, that's it. what I happened? Running around. <laughs> what happened to the paste? I don't remember. Did a, I think a calf kicked it, or a cow kicked it? Does that sound familiar? You yeah, what? Did a cow kick the paste while it was in your pocket, or a cow? I, I don't know. What That's the story I heard, was that there was a a, be. a jar of paste in your pocket, and the cow or calf kicked that paste, and it broke in your pocket. Yeah, that's right. And then, yeah. that I, paste... I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what you did then? Well, I, I suppose I dropped my pants and tried <laughs> clean up, tried to clean up. The story I heard was you dropped your pants and you ran to the creek, because mm -hmm. it was up at the Grable place, and you ran to the creek as fast as possible well, the to the creek and got in the water. Acid. That's right. Acid. Yeah, I forgot about I think that, that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would have liked that paste on your skin very long. No, no. It was pretty. <laughs> it, I'm sure it wasn't funny at the time, but it's a pretty good story now. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I can't remember who told me that one.